Hello and welcome to what is probably the biggest update to Euclidean sequencer that we've had so far. Now it's funny uh, that in the last version I introduced a new mode called Polyrhythms and uh, I labelled up the old mode Polymeter as a lot of people have been referring to it as Polymeter. But then someone came along and said that isn't the true definition of Polymeter. So I looked into it and we've labelled the original mode back to Euclidean. So now we have Euclidean, uh, polyrhythm, and then poly a new polymeter mode, which we've introduced in version 1.04. Now in this mode, we have uh, four bands, but each band is controlled by a time signature. And we can vary that time signature, and that affects the number of um, notes that appear per revolution of each band and this mode also introduces eighth notes and uh, eighth note triplets and uh, we can selectively turn these notes on and off just by tapping on them um, and that opens up a whole new ball game uh, in terms of syncopated rhythms so let's take a brief look at the modes and how they operate so we can differentiate between them. Starting with the Euclidean mode, which was the original mode introduced in the first version of Euclidean Sequencer. Now in this mode, uh, each band is split into a number of equally spaced steps that represent a beat. And we add a number of notes or events to those steps and uh, Euclidean attempts to space them equally but it's not always possible without forcing uh, an odd number of uh, events onto a note if you can see what I mean which creates a kind of a quirky pattern when it's played um, but it's it can be very pleasing on the ear now in polyrhythm mode uh, we all we have is an events knob and we can specify a number of events that are split and evenly around that uh, that wheel and uh, they are not forced to note boundaries and when I play back this uh, this sequence you'll notice that each of the hands uh, completes one revolution in the same amount of time assuming that all bands are set to the same speed in contrast to this polymeter mode sounds quite different from the other modes each wheel runs at a different time signature. This causes each band to spin slightly out of sync with others, only coming back into alignment after several rotations. As mentioned before, in this mode we can introduce eighth notes and eighth note triplets, and that really spices things up. And as we also mentioned, in uh, both uh, polyrhythm and polymeter mode, we can now disable particular notes, uh, so that note position will not play. Now if I start the wheels rotating, you'll see that each band will spin at a different speed, despite the fact they're all at one time speed. Uh, that is because each note represents one uh, beat, and so uh, everything is up on a beat except eighth notes and triplets. Now in order for these uh, polymeters to be heard properly and hear the intertwining textures, um, I want you to take note of how um, velocities are now uh, generated in this particular mode. So as I randomize here, you see that the quarter notes uh, here, the first note of the beat is emphasized. And here on eighth note triplets, the fourth beat uh, of every subsequent note is emphasized. And if we keep going, so at some point we'll hit an eighth note. And here you can see that every third note is emphasized. Now if you long press on the velocity button, you have a, an option in here now to uh, add um, uh, accents to polymeters. And we can turn that off if we want to go back to a purely randomized um, velocity uh, state. But I, I recommend that you leave them uh, turned on. And um, also in here we can actually set the values for the primary secondary and non-accented um, notes so you can set these up as you wish and that might be quite useful depending on what instrument you're randomizing for as they all have different velocity curves so i think that's enough talk let's have a little look at uh, 
at the randomization of some uh, polymeters and let's just see uh, what type of complex patterns we can create uh, using this this mode As you heard there, we can create some nice entwined uh, complex patterns using polymeter mode. So another addition to version 1.04 is the ability to copy and paste bands. Now if you look to the left of the editor, the A, B, C, D buttons now have chevrons in the top corners. You can see band C here has uh, plenty of notes in it and band D doesn't. So if we move to band D and long press on that button, we can now copy the events from band C into band D. Now the great thing is that that also copies uh, controllers as well as notes. Now although Euclidean is an AU uh, V3 uh, plugin, uh, it does have some functionality in standalone mode and we've now uh, added the ability to connect directly to uh, external instruments and also Bluetooth devices. And uh, that opens up a, a whole new world. Um, we can also, in settings now, uh, redirect uh, ports 1 to 4 to those external devices. So instead of being routed uh, through the four outputs within, say, AUM, uh, we can route directly to external hardware. So once you've mapped external instruments, uh, to those ports you can use the actual port numbers on each band to redirect to, to those external devices. Now I want to take a look at the MIDI chord detection function which has been in Euclidean for a while um, but it's been enhanced somewhat. Now I have a pattern here and I'm just going to play that pattern just so you can hear what it sounds like as it stands. Now we can actually control the pattern um, by an external MIDI keyboard. So I'm just going to make sure that my external MIDI keyboard is rooted into a uh, Euclidean sequence and I'm turning on the chord recognition function. Now I want you to notice that as I press uh, uh, various chords on my external keyboard, the actual notes within the editor are jumping around to try and conform to that chord. Now in previous versions that would jump to the nearest note. Now I've got another algorithm in place that allows it to uh, move about so that the higher up the keyboard you play, the higher the notes, the further down your keyboard you play, the lower the notes. staying in one tonal place on the keyboard you can actually get a lot more variations out of this now some people may have noticed that uh, 
the um, MIDI core detection button has a little chevron in the top corner which means it can be long pressed and uh, if we long press that now we get something called a pattern sequencer and that works in conjunction with MIDI chord detection. Let me show you how this works. So what we can do is we can select a pattern and then hit the add button in the sequencer. Select a new pattern, hit the add button in the sequencer. Now those two patterns we've added make a sequence and each of those patterns will play for four bars because if you look it says times four underneath you can change that to whatever you want. But if we uh, start this uh, this playing and then I was to press and hold a, uh, an, a chord on the MIDI sequence you'll see that it will play pattern one and then it will progress on to pattern two where it will stay indefinitely till you release a chord. And, uh, and and then the pattern will progress again. So both pattern one and pattern two are polymeters. But if we check a look at pattern three, it's actually actually a Euclidean sequence. So let's add that to the sequence. Now, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn off bands uh, three and four and replace that selected uh, event 3 with uh, this sequence and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to then uh, enable bands 3 and 4 and then insert that into, uh, into the chain now before we preview that I'm going to enable the latch button which means it won't play notes until we actually play a chord and I can start the sequencer going and then when I play a chord Seamless transitions between uh, both types of sequence. Now we can also enable the or um, rewind pattern on chord detection button and uh, and give it a go. But notice the clock hands keep continuing when we move from one pattern to another. But you can force a um, a rewind at any point by clicking this uh, this button at the bottom right here. So I think uh, this is a great new addition, and I can think of lots of places to go with this uh, to expand upon it in future versions. But yeah. Don't forget, if you want to use this, you have to turn it on with a little power button in the upper right corner. So I think that just about concludes my uh, quick look at 1.04 updates. There are more, but you'll find them in your own time. So thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to thumb up the video, and uh, I'll see you next time.